Brian Kenny has, for the last number of years, emceed the event in, Jan or in July. Right. And, and BK has a really long connection with not only the museum, but with the town. He is there on the ground preparing for tomorrow. BK, good morning. Good morning, guys. Good to be with you. You know, before we talk about you know, the passings in the kind of different feel around uh, the weekend when it comes up, I read an article over the weekend. I was unaware of the personal connection that you've had with Cooperstown, New York for so much of your life. Fill in our viewers. Oh, wow. Well, I, I first started coming up here when I was a little kid. My father, who was, uh, you know, an NYPD detective, uh, fresh off the boat from Ireland, loved baseball, thought that was part of being an American. So uh, I was always going to Yankee and Met games. And then he would drive me up here to Cooperstown, which was a big thing for us back in the, in the old days. Uh, normally, you know, we might uh, go camping or something, but to come up to Cooperstown and stay in the Cooperstown Motel, that was a big deal. And we came up here when I was a little kid a bunch of times. Um, I would come up here as a local sportscaster when I was working at WTZA in Kingston, and I would cover the ceremonies then. Um, when I met my wife, we would come up here before we were married. Then we would come up here every year when we were married for our anniversary, which is in February. So we're, we're used to being up here in the wintertime. So my wife, uh, Coco, and I have been coming up here for 30 years, and our oldest daughter uh, had her wedding. We, she was married at the Otisaga. So, yes, Chief, we have a long history with Cooperstown. You, you got some hookups <laughs> and you're getting into the Otis Saga for that's, weddings, BK. That, that's really great. It's a special place <laughs> really for baseball fans. Hey, so, BK, behind you, before we dive into things, uh, you're, fr you're in front of the Hank Aaron exhibit. Uh, tell, us, tell us a little bit about the Hank Aaron exhibit and what people might see when they go through there. Yeah, Harold, we're going to have a whole tour coming up on MLB Now. We're going to be doing the show live from here in the Hall of Fame, which we've never done. Uh, so, MLB Now at 2 o'clock Eastern right here in the Hall of Fame. We're right now in the Hank Aaron exhibit, and there's only two uh, individuals that merit their own exhibit. Babe Ruth, of course, that, that's been here for years. And then about uh, 11, 12 years ago, they put together this Hank Aaron exhibit. And not only, well, you can see the, the uniform that's over my shoulder uh, here. As you see, that's, this is the entrance chasing the dream. And there he is hitting number 715. Um, and there he is as a young man going off uh, to play professional baseball. I believe he's 17 or 18 years old there. His MVP trophies are here. His World Series ring from 1957 is here. That's the uh, Presidential Medal of Freedom, that the one that he received from President Bush. That uniform that was I was mentioning over my shoulder, that's the uniform that he was wearing when he hit number 715. So it's, it's a big exhibit dedicated to Henry Aaron uh, that is up here, that's right near the records gallery. So his 755 is here, and they also recognize, of course, Barry Bonds. That's down in the plaque gallery where they have flowers now on his plaque. So they're, they're, Hank was very um, generous to the Hall of Fame. Even when he was playing, I think he recognized the historical nature of the things that he was doing. And so he donated many things. His 500 home run bat is here. His 600 home run bat is here. His 3,000 wow. hit bat is here. Uh, they, they, we, we spoke to Eric Stroll, who was the chief curator for the Hall of Fame yesterday, and he's giving us a whole tour this afternoon. But he said that Henry was one of the more generous players while he was playing and then when he was retired in knowing that these things had historical importance and fans should be able to see them. You know, it's, uh, it's so different when you go through the hall and you see an exhibit of, say, Babe Ruth or whoever it might be when they've passed away, you look at them a little bit different. I, just watching this exhibit and knowing that, that Hank passed away now, does it have a different take and feel to you as well, knowing that it's, you're not going to see him this July and, and it's a little bit different now? Yeah, it is, Harold. I guess it hasn't really hit me fully. I mean, it's hard to even fathom this. Can you imagine that? Joe Morgan's not going to be here this year. He's here every year. Hank was here in 2019, the last ceremony. Um, Don Sutton, who was here year after year. Tom Seaver was here year after year. Lou Brock as well. Whitey Ford came up here every, just about every single year until the last few years, uh, you know, as he got a little more frail and, and much older. But it, I, I tell you the truth, Harold, I haven't, I, I, don't, I haven't felt that these guys have passed into history yet. It hasn't hit me. There's, there's just too many. It feels like, you know, just to put it in perspective for people, uh, Frank Robinson, I believe, was the only Hall of Famer to pass away in 2019. It's a pretty big loss. Frank Robinson is one of the all-time greats. And now in 13 months, 10, 
10 of them, including Al Kaline, uh, Tom Seaver. These are iconic franchise figures. And Hank Aaron, who's a, a titanic figure in baseball of historical importance to the country as well with his putting up uh, with racial intolerance and hatred and doing so with such grace. And that he had such a long post-career uh, um, kind of ambassadorship for baseball, for the country, representing uh, the best of baseball, the best of all of us. I, I guess it hasn't sunk in yet. I, I can't even fathom that all of these guys who have been coming up here, these large figures, these larger-than-life figures, that they're gone. It hasn't even sunk into me yet.